Well, they're saying that, and of course, look, I'm a Gibraltarian too, like any other, even though I hold the post of chief minister temporarily, uh, and I'm just as frustrated as everybody else. But look, we need to uh, say that we want power, whatever it is that is causing the problem, but we also have to try and understand the problem in order to fix it. And last week, for example, was very frustrating, in particular for government, because we had one power cut, which was actually uh, an organized cut in the very early hours of the morning, which was going to enable a change in the structure of the way that the temporary power that we have was being supplied in order to resolve one particular issue that had come to light. Um, and that went very well. It went absolutely according to plan. It's been tested against some other problems to ensure that there won't be more tripping, and therefore you know, we're very happy with that. And then during the course of the morning, as part of the parallel works which are being done, because remember that what we are doing is doing all of the works at once in order to get them done as quickly as possible, somebody went through a wire with a Kango hammer. Now look, you can plan for everything, but unfortunately if you're left a system that doesn't have a schematic and uh, there are human beings involved and everything, you know, I just want to make sure that the guy who went through that cable with the Kango hammer is okay. Um, and that we can know that that is a problem, we can isolate it. But in order to run a modern civilized society, you need to have power. In order to run a modern finance center, you need to have power. In order to run Gibraltar as we want it to be, you need to have power. And we have to get all of these things right. But what it is not uh, possible to do is to say, we simply blame the people who are there now in the absence of looking at whatever else it may be that may be relevant be, and the reason why these power cuts are happening. You've said more than once that this issue is the number one priority for your government and of course you're nearly three quarters of the way through your term of office and you haven't even reclaimed the land yet on which the power station will be built. Would you concede that on this issue you failed so far? Absolutely not and that would be completely untrue and unfair to say that we have failed because I'll tell you what we have done and I'll tell you what would have been the absolute failure. If I had received a report 10 years ago telling me that Waterport was going to fail at some stage soon, and certainly by 2013 it would have failed for sure, and I had done nothing, then it would be an absolute failure, and that is the failure of the previous administration. But if instead what I had done was look at what the cost of fuel is, look at the deal that the previous administration was looking to do. Realize just how bad a deal it was for Gibraltar. And forget when Mr. Feetham says that the cost of 145 million was the whole cost of their power station. It wasn't. There are lots of other hidden costs there. And instead, I stop the process. I bring in temporary power. And I make sure that we do the right deal for the future generations of Gibraltarians that will rely on the new power station. Then that is actually exactly the right thing to do. And I'll tell you more about the, the process. The reclamation is not essential to the whole of the new power station as it is going to be. It's an essential part of rejigging that part of Gibraltar for the power station to be there. But the power station, work on the power station will start even before the reclamation has started or even finished. Will it be ready in two years time as you said in April that it would be? From the moment that we hand over the site, the estimated time for completion will be 18 to 24 months. Your critics will say that if you had gone along with the GSD's plans for the power station, it would already be built by now or very nearly. It wouldn't have been ready by now because a lot of work was still required. But look, we then would have had a power station burning diesel for the next 30 to 40 years and the price of diesel only going in one direction, up. Now, if Mr. Feetham and the people in the GSD are so concerned about the increasing recurrent cost of running Gibraltar, one of the largest elements in the recurrent increased cost is the cost of diesel. They were going to put up the cost of electricity by 5% a year for 20 years. Now, in compound terms, that's almost more than 200%. And that's without accounting for the fuel needed. The cost of doing business in Gibraltar, if the GSD had won the election and had implemented that solution, would have been so high that it's very likely that even though we might have had power, people would have left Gibraltar because simply the cost of electricity would have started to become unaffordable. I know I have made the right decisions for this community. I know that they are right not just for today but for future generations of Gibraltarians. I know they're also right in relation to costs and I know that the temporary solutions that we brought in will give us the temporary power that we need even though we have had what I consider to be totally unacceptable power cuts. Very frustrating for the government but it is actually nonsense for people to go around persuading themselves that oh, we don't have a power station but we have a park. We don't have a power station but we have a hospital. Look, these things cannot be equated in that way and it's not as if 
all 10 ministers are simply going to concentrate on doing one thing. I've got a team of ministers delivering the best power station solution for Gibraltar, and that is what we need to ensure we have. You said that the cost of electricity would be going up by 5% a year if the GSD had got into office and built its power station. But how much will it have to go up if you're re-elected next year? Why didn't you ask me how much it might go down by? Will it go down? Well, I've told you that the cost of generating electricity in Gibraltar is primarily led by the cost of the fuel. The government already offers a 40% subsidy against that cost by keeping utility costs as they are. If we are able to slash the fuel cost by almost a half, if not more, then it may be that even the amounts that we charge today cover the cost of producing electricity once you take the capex out of the equation and you look at just the cost of fuel and running the station. So it may be that the solution that we provide in the future enables us to at least produce electricity for what we charge for it. And if we were to come to a stage where we produce electricity for less than we charge for it, look, my undertaking to the people of Gibraltar tonight on Newswatch with you is that I do not intend to make money out of the generation of electricity. So if I am Chief Minister and under uh, my administration in the future we are producing electricity for less than we charge the consumer, we will bring the cost down. Well, one way or the other, of course, the power station won't be ready in time for the next election. So will you be able to repeat at that election the pledge that you made in your 2011 manifesto that electricity charges would remain frozen? I think it's fair to say that we'll be able to offer it if it is clear by then that gas is going to be uh, operating as the fuel within a number of months of the next uh, general election. It wouldn't be fair for me to say without knowing today, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to put an unfair question to me, without knowing today what the cost of diesel will be by the time of the next general election, that we'll be able to absorb all of that cost to the taxpayer because diesel is going uh, in an astronomical uh, up uh, cost direction.